TFN show with TFN. And let's take a look at what we got going on today. Honestly, kind of not a lot, right? You have some stuff in the news regarding the market, obviously big one being Intel and Amazon. Uh, this market, in my opinion, is waiting uh, for what Powell's gonna say tomorrow, right? So we're either dealing with a 25 or 50 basis point uh, rate cut. I think a lot of people are pricing it. I mean, the bonds themselves are pricing in uh, 50, which is wild to me, right? I, I personally do not believe it's going to be 50. I, I think Powell has been extremely conservative. I've said this plenty of times, but he's been extremely conservative about this entire kind of thing. You still have somewhat strong economic data. I mean, coming out today, right, retail sales, top Wall Street estimates in August. And, you know, let's let's talk about it, right? Because the retail sales rose 0.1% and economists had expected a 0.2% decrease. So, I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty strong, right? I don't see where we get, a, a you know, 50 basis points. I, I don't think that makes much sense right now, but a lot of the market... Uh, seems to think so. I think one of the major issues, you know, you run and that Powell runs with this is if you cut it too quickly, you're going to really, um, you know, stimulate a lot of buying or stimulate a lot of economic activity. And we're really not in the clear yet. Right. And so you have this weird thing where retail sales are still pretty strong. Right. I mean, as we see increase about 0.1 percent, uh, but you have some fears over the job market. So, I mean, we I, as I said multiple times, I think we're in pretty new territory. It's always okay to look, you know, what things have happened in the past and, and how things have responded, uh, you know, certain inputs. But I, I think this is a little bit different. Um, so we'll see what happens tomorrow. I'm betting on a 25 basis point, mainly because he kind of walked himself into it. I, I think if he hadn't done that, we probably would leave rates uh, unchanged. Of course, there is the lag, of course. And as we were talking about yesterday, you know, everything goes really swimmingly until it doesn't. And now you have a really big issue, and especially with jobs, right? It's far easier to lose jobs in the economy or new openings than it is to get those back. Uh, let's see what we got going on right now. You have the Dow Jones Industrial up about 0.17%. You have the composite up about 0.06%. It's pretty flat right now. The dollar flat as well at 100 uh, 91, kind of back up closer to 100 than it was yesterday, but not a big deal. Uh, crude oil still has some of the higher gains, trading at 71.41 as it is. The uh, E-mini, those futures out there trading down about 0.15%. The gold contract off slightly from yesterday. I think it closed around 26.08, trading at 2,595 and 90 cents. Copper still holding pretty strong. Silver still holding pretty strong. Mike, if you're in the den, send me a silver mean man. This is going really well, at least in the metals. Russell futures up about 0.73%. Let's take a look if anything else is kind of interesting. Disney doing a little bit better. Okay, I'm happy looking at my personal portfolio. <laughs> We're trading at 92.71. Uh, and then GE has really done so well this year. Um, obviously, they spun off a lot of their different stuff. This is uh, aerospace, so they're making all those engines, and it's doing uh, quite well for themselves. Boeing, having some interesting stuff. I guess tensions are getting a little bit hotter uh, at the uh, line with the strike. You had some security guards pulling weapons, and uh, the stock is in, in a rough position, I always uh, say. Let's talk a little bit right now. Well, first thing, I guess, some of the big news, right? Not too much to do with the market, but how about that? that Hezbollah attack, right? Um, they had the pagers. I was trying to look up how on earth that could have happened, right? Um, a lot of different ways. And what it seems like happened is they were using a certain kind of pager. Uh, I think it's called like gold Apollo or something like that. It uses lithium ion battery. Now, these batteries don't really tend to explode. They can, but under really high uh, amperage, which I think would be kind of hard to do. And of course, these kind of things communicate via radios, which would make a little bit more sense uh, probably what Mossad is very good at doing is getting into the supply chain and propagating its stuff through there. Of course, that was kind of the assumed route of uh, how Stuxnet propagated through the Iranian uh, nuclear facility, the uranium enrichment facility. Uh, so it seems like Hezbollah basically bought bad and rigged uh, kind of pagers. Pretty nuts stuff in the news, and it makes you realize there's a lot of stuff that goes on in this world that I'm really uh, aware that people are capable of. Uh, very interesting stuff. That's why I always try to bring you uh, a little bit of news, at least in the realm of like cybersecurity or networking or something like that. Let's talk a little bit about Intel. So some good news for them. Still, you know, we're at 2149. Okay, what's the news? 
Basically, they're partnering even further with Amazon. Uh, Intel is going to spin off the foundry business. Again, that is still not profitable, um, but they are spinning it off, and uh, Amazon is going to have them uh, make some of the chips for them, which is pretty solid. These are going to be some 18A chips and then um, some chips based off of uh, Intel 3, uh, which is really interesting. And we'll see if that can give us some money. Of course, the U.S. government also gave them more money as well. We spoke about that yesterday, about $3 billion. Dollars are they're going to be? Uh, let's see if anything else. Yeah, Intel's laying off more than 15,000 people as part of its 10 billion cost reduction plan to regain financial stability following a second quarter net loss of 1.6 billion. Gelsinger says it's going to be good, but he's the CEO. Of course, he has to say it. Here's my thing: like that is good news, right? That is fantastic. You're still getting some more capital flowing in, spinning off the foundry business. But we just looked at GE briefly. Um, and they did the same thing, spinning off their aerospace from healthcare, and uh, they're doing super well. You still have a lot going on in this, right? And I really do think we're going to get some fluctuation, mainly around this $20 area. This is all good news, but nothing is realized yet in any capacity. And, I mean, you know, we're going up against this. And you have a bunch of people in these areas who are still holding onto it because they bought it too high. I think you could move anywhere up near this gap down, you're going to face some kind of basically selling, right? I don't think people want to stay in it uh, for too long. And uh, so while this is good news, like overall, right, like the company won't collapse or anything, um, I, I still think there's not a lot of, you know, spicy stuff going on uh, for this equity right now. And so I'm, I kind of take away from it uh, just to sit and watch and see what happens. Kind of interesting, right? I mean, I don't know. We can talk about Microsoft a little bit. This is some interesting news. One second. No. Well, folks, stay right there. We some stuff with Microsoft. We have Basil Chapman up next. And of course, we are joined uh, by Tim Ord of the Ord Oracle today. I know we're all looking forward uh, to hearing what he has to say on the markets and gold. So stay right there, and we will be right back.